Today, our media recognition is at the Tank Museum of the British Army, located in the Bobbington camp. The Tank Museum is a wonderful place, full of amazing piece of history. We shall introduce you a short history of the main battle tanks, as well as sometimes additional vehicles that played an historical role in military history. Let's start first with a piece of history. It's a mock-up of what Leonard da Vinci designed at the 15th century. Imagine the tank, his project at least, behind me. Wasn't it surprising? Present days in the industry show plenty of projects of unmanned ground vehicles. They are still projects, but imagine, this is World War II creation of the German army. Uh, it was remotely controlled to bring explosives and make tanks explode. So almost 80 years ago, there were already projects of UGVs. So nothing new in the concept, but of course, technology makes new progress. The first tanks designed during World War I, first by the French Renault General Etienne, were designed to accompany infantry charges. So they were very slow, they didn't need to go fast. Only during the period between the two world wars were tanks designed to work independently, I mean, as autonomous units. And Captain Charles de Gaulle, later colonel, later general, later president of France, was one of the very first to design the tank as an autonomous instrument of war. So uh, after World War II, tanks became faster and faster with heavier guns, but this is another story. The Sherman tank is certainly the most emblematic tank of World War II on the Allied side. But the Sherman tank was also derived in different variants used for D-Day, where the Hobart Spunies, it's an Englishman who designed a lot of special uses for Shermans and other British tanks. And this is one of the models behind me, used for demining, I mean mine clearing with a flail. The tank museum shelters some incredible wonders or extraordinary pieces. Look at this little Caro Veloce. It's an Italian tankette from 1933. A flamethrower, actually, with a 500-liter trailer uh, behind the tankette. It served in North Africa, where it was captured by the British troops, the British Eighth Army. shelters an incredible collection of Tiger tanks, ranging from the Tiger I, the very one that served in the movie Fury, uh, to the Tiger II tanks, but it includes prototypes of the uh, Porsche turrets on the Tiger II tank. We are now in a brand new room, inaugurated only on the 22nd of March, 2018. This is the scale model room and believe me they are absolutely crazy project. This one of the Renaissance period, I mean in 1500s, is relatively uh, modest. It was designed by the German inventor. But also a few yards from here we have another German project. This one is certainly the craziest project of tank ever designed. This is certainly the craziest tank ever designed in history. It's called, it was called the Ratte. It's a Land Cruiser tank in Machine in 1942 by the Germans. It weighs, it should have weighed, 1,000 tons. The armament is impressive. You have a turret with two guns from the Gneisenau battleship, 280 mm caliber. And we also have two 120 mm uh, guns that were designed for anti tank purpose. And also eight anti aircraft guns, 20 mm, the FLAC, which were 
very widely used in the German army at the time. To give you an idea of the size of this monster, just compare the size of a human being with the tank, 35 meter long tank. Just imagine a 1,000 ton monster supposed to drive. Where? Where can you move such a fortress? Well, we'll never know. In 1942, the Russians tried to make a tanket fly with an Antonov, was an idea of Antonov. But of course, it never succeeded because the Russians at that time didn't have any engine or aircraft able to make such a little tanket fly. So the project was aborted. In the 1950s, it was already the Cold War, and incredible projects were designed, namely this Chrysler tank. In 1956, it was called the Atomic Tank. The crew was exclusively sheltered in the turret. And would you believe it, this tank was supposed to be amphibious because of the floatability of the turret. Needless to say that it was never built. But other projects, even Crezia, were also designed with the atomic energy for the engines. They also never were produced. Nowadays, there is one key word in tank development, it's smart. This is a smart tank. It would be a smart tank. It's a one-man crew vehicle and everything is closed with a fully independent suspension. And of course, the gun will be laser one, not firing shells anymore. So it might be a vehicle that should, according to what is presented here, that should be manufactured around the year 2050. But it's of course only a concept because nobody knows what will actually be manufactured in some 30 and more years. The American DARPA, let's call it a think tank for tank development and other vehicle development of the US Army is just imagining working on different kinds of smart vehicles. And this one will be, of course, full of captors, sensors of all kinds, and nobody knows what will be actually produced in more than 30 years. But at least it gives an idea of the extraordinary kind of vehicles they're working on. The first British tank after World War II was the Centurion, who became famous with the wars waged by Israel against its neighbors in the years 60s and 70s. After the Centurion, this, we had the Conqueror, a much more massive main battle tanks that served in the, from the mid 50s to the mid 60s. Successor of the Conqueror, the Chieftain. The Chieftain main ballot tank was representative at most of the Cold War era. It served during 30 years from the 60s to the year 90s. Successor of the Chieftain, we had the Challenger 1, which represented a major progress in comparison with its predecessor and service started in the years 80s. Last of the British Army tanks is the Challenger 2, 
whose first unit was delivered on the 1st of June 2000. The armament of the Challenger 1 and Challenger 2 tanks is the same, basically. It's a 120mm gun with a coaxial machine gun. But in terms of protection and fire control system, there is a generation difference, of course. The Challenger 2 is able to quickly engage two targets rapidly one after the other, which the Challenger 1 could not do. And in terms of protection, of course, the reactive armor of the Challenger 2 is much more efficient than one of the Challenger 1.